It's time for another installment of Monoprice Mod Mondays. I'm Brian, and you're watching BV3D. So I've had problems in the past where the ribbon cable that connects to the extruder gets caught under the arm that holds the x-axis limit switch and then I'm not paying attention and I home the z-axis and it starts to pull on that cable and that z-axis is really pretty strong. So I've had to run over to the printer and turn it off in order to extricate the cable from that arm. So I decided to do something about it. I noticed on my Prusa i3 Mark III that they keep all of the cables going to the extruder in a nice neat bundle using some cable wrap. I'm showing you some white cable wrap so you can see what it is. It's just a spiral and it wraps around the cable and it keeps everything all nice and neat. So I thought perhaps I could be clever and fold the ribbon cable in half along its length and then wrap that cable wrap around it and keep everything out of the way. So I needed a way to anchor one end of the cable wrap to the extruder and then I want to keep the midpoint of it up high in about the same place that the ribbon cable is clipped already. So I designed two parts in Tinkercad. One of them mounts to the back of the extruder and the other one mounts under the spool holder, and it has a clip to hold the cable wrap. So here's a quick time lapse of me and Tinkercad putting together the original version of the extruder end cable wrap anchor. So now that we've got the file exported from Tinkercad, it's time to slice it. And we'll import it here into Cura. Then we'll save that G-code file out to the desktop. Now that we've got the file on the desktop, we can drag it over to Octoprint. And then we can start the print. So here's the piece fresh off the printer, and the cable wrap fits right in there. And I figured it, a zip tie on either end of that would hold that in place and keep it right where it needed to be. And then, then I realized my mistake. There is no way that I can get the head of that ribbon cable through this little opening right here. So I had to go back to the drawing board. <laughs> so I had to make a few changes to the design and this is what I came up with. This part is largely the same, but as you can tell, I've got a nice area cut out for the cable wrap. And I also have some nice grooves built into it here and here for zip ties to hold everything in place. So the way that's gonna work is cable wrap is going to fit in here, and I've got an insert through hole right there. So that you can crank down the zip tie. And the same here. Then with your zip ties in place, holding that down, you can just trim those off. And that will keep that right at the back end of the extruder with the ribbon cable inside. Got a similar setup for under the spool holder. And I've got the through holes made here. So 
Again, the other end of it will just thread through here and you tighten the zip ties. And this mounts under the spool holder. This is the spool holder goes here and it'll hold it everything in place. And I'll show you all that in just a moment. So here we are around the back of the printer. And there's the clip that holds the ribbon cable in place up at the top of the gantry. So loosen that clip and take the ribbon cable out. Then on the back side of the extruder, we can start putting the cable wrap on the ribbon cable. We'll need to fold the ribbon cable in half along its length like this. Then you can start installing the cable wrap. I like to open it up just a little bit and for the first part of it you can really just kind of screw it on there, just give it some twisting and it should go on fairly easily. Once you've got that done part of the way, then you're going to need to start wrapping the cable wrap around the cable instead of just kind of twisting it on. Once you've got the cable wrap installed on the ribbon cable, then it's time to add the mounting bracket to the back of the extruder. Remove the ribbon cable from the back of the extruder. It just lifts off and set it aside. We're going to be removing the screws here and here in order to install the bracket. Now we can use the screws from the back of the extruder to hold the bracket in place. Go ahead and get the screws inserted in the bracket. Then attach the bracket to the back of the extruder. Make sure it's on there good and snug. Next we're going to need a couple of zip ties. Insert one zip tie into the hole in the back of the bracket. Then get the extruder cable and plug it back in on the back of the extruder. Zip the zip ties onto the cable wrap. When that's done, trim them off. Now it's time to take the spool off of the spindle. You can just set it on top of the printer for now. Then remove the screws that keep the spool holder in place. Here's our bracket for the top part. We'll set that here where the spool holder was and then put the spool holder on top. Put the screws back in place so that the spool holder holds the bracket in place. Then you can put the spool back on the holder. Use zip ties to hold the cable wrap in place and then trim off the excess. And then we'll check and make sure that we've got good range of motion and nothing is binding. Looks like everything's working well. There! Now I don't have to worry about that ribbon cable getting snagged by the x-axis limit switch. Well that's it for the episode. I thought it might be nice to take a break from the hardcore technical stuff and print a simple mod to solve a problem I've had with the printer. The mounting brackets are available on Thingiverse and links are down in the description. There's also some channel support links in the description if you're so inclined. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. You can subscribe by clicking the BV3D logo right over here. And over here is a video that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. If you have a question or something to say, let me know down in the comments. So thanks for watching, have a great day, and go print something cool.